Hi guys, thanks for joining me today. It's Marilyn. Yesterday I uploaded a new video on YouTube where I showed you mainly how to dye and emboss these earrings. And in the video I told you that I would show you how I created this shape in Inkscape. I didn't think everyone would be interested in Inkscape, so I just wanted to do it on a separate video, and it's time to do that now. I tried to use Inkscape about a year ago, and I gave up pretty quickly because it was overwhelming and very intimidating. Well, recently I started watching tutorials, and I downloaded Inkscape's newest version, version 1.0, and I'm learning that it's a super useful tool for us Cricut people. If you haven't downloaded Inkscape, or let's say you have an old version, I'd highly recommend that you update to the 1.0, especially if you're not super familiar with your version. I got to this page by just typing in inkscape.org. If you go to this page, you click on this Download Now area, and it will take you to the download page. You can also get to the download page directly if you just do a Google search for Inkscape download and it'll probably bring you right to this page. Now I have a Mac so I clicked on that and then you just wait for it to start. If it doesn't start, and there it went, then you would click here. So right now it's in my downloads folder I clicked on it in my downloads folder and now it's opening it. Now that it's on my computer, I'm going to move it to my applications folder just by dragging down to applications. Now I already have it on my computer and so I'm going to click stop here, but I wanted to show you how you get started. It's very, very easy to download. So I'll click stop and I'll just back out of all of this. So this is the front page of Inkscape. And the last thing I was working in was text and font and so that's showing over here. Okay, so I had to click on the document to get the Inkscape options up here to show up. What we're going to do today is we are going to start with a rectangle. So this says create rectangles and squares. I click on it and now it's gray and I come over to my sheet here. Now this is just the default template. I think it's probably just your basic 8.5 by 11 size sheet. You can work outside of it. It really doesn't matter. This is truly just a template in case you want to see a working size of what you're working with or you want to see a template the size of what you're working with. Okay, so to make your rectangle, you put your little crossbars where you want it, and then I'm pushing down on my mouse and I'm dragging. And you just drag it to the size you want it. Now, if I wanted it to be a perfect square, I would continue to hold down my mouse and I also push down the control button. Now, I've pushed control and it's still not a square. You have to start dragging it for it to snap to a square. So you just kind of drag it until it's a perfect square. In my case, I'm going to let go of the control because I truly want it to be a rectangle. Okay, so I let go of the mouse. The little squares are showing the corners. This little round thing here is wonderful. It's grab bar. And I'm going to grab that grab bar and I'm going to pull down on it and look at what it does. It makes your corners into slightly radius. So this comes in handy a lot. I really don't like super sharp corners when it comes to my Cricut. And so I'm going to use this time after time. But it's just going to barely be radius because once we make changes to this rectangle, some of those radius corners are going to get stretched and so I just want to barely have any radius whatsoever. I'm going to click outside of this so you can see there's my little radius corners. Now the next thing that I want to do is go up to path, click on path, and then I want to use path effects. 
So what that does, when you click on something up here, text, path, it opens your working space over here. So notice that now in addition to the text and font area, I have path effects. I have nothing selected over here, so I can't click this add path effects because nothing is selected. So let's go back and click on our rectangle. Now notice there's a plus sign here. That's asking me what path effect I want to add. I had no clue what a path effect was. I just watched videos, I took notes, and I did what they told me. So if you're doing this and you have no idea what I'm talking about, honestly, I have no idea what I'm talking about either. I just know the process to get there. So click this plus sign, and then these are all the path effects. I've only played with two of them, but the one I want is this perspective slash envelope. And I was just kind of looking through these and I thought, well, that kind of looks like a shape I want to do with my earrings. So I tried it and it worked. Okay, so from the shape of my earrings, you know I want this side to come in some and I want this side to come in to the left. And it took me a while playing with all these things over here to figure that out. And here's what I figured out. So this is my x-axis. This is an x-axis. And you can move it from the top or the bottom on the left or right. So top left x-axis is right here. Top right x-axis is right here. Bottom left x-axis is right here. And then bottom right is right here. So they're in the same spot over here as they are over here. Now the y-axis, that's the up and down if I wanted something here to go up or down. But we're just going to work with the x-axis today. Okay, so I want this top left at x-axis to move to the right, and so I'm going to increase this number. I'm going to make it more positive versus taking away from it. So watch when I start clicking on this plus sign, how that left, top left corner moves. It's exactly what I want it to do. Now the way I figured out how to make the right side exactly like the left side is this. I kind of played with this until I thought the angle looked good. Now originally this number was the same as this number. So I started at 5140 up here. And so let's add 26 to it. That would be, I'm sorry, let's add 25 to it. So that would be 7640. Okay, so it's this number and this number started the same. I increased this and I went up by 25 points, 25.0. So if I went up 25.0 here, I want to go down 25.0 here. So notice over here, the x-axis numbers are the same. I need to go down 25, so I'm gonna go down to 105.02. I'm just taking this number, minus 25, and I get 105.02. So you can either do it by clicking the negative, or I could just go over and type in 105.02, but I like to watch it move, and I want you to see what's happening. Okay, I'll go ahead and finish it by just typing in the number 105.02, and then clicking the enter, and there's the shape of our earring. Let me click out of this, and there you see. Now, if you don't like the shapes of your corners, you can still click on the square, click over here. You can still use this grab bar and increase or decrease the radius. So I'm going to decrease it a little bit by moving it up. And that has a little bit less of a radius than it did. Of course, that's, that's less too. Let me do this. I'm going to increase it just a tiny bit. Okay, I'm going to live with that. So now what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to go up to File, and I'm going to say Save As. And up here, where it says Name, I'm going to get rid of the word Drawing, and I'm going to call it a Skewed Rectangle. Now, you have all these ways you can save it. I just save everything as plain SVG. It's going to save it to my desktop. If I wanted to, I could save it to Documents or anywhere else. But I'm going to save it to my desktop, so I click Save. And you can't see the right over here. You can't see my desktop, but it's there. One other thing before we move off of this is to select this, I call it a rectangle, a skewed rectangle, to move it around or change the size of it, then you click up on this select, click on it, and I did that so I could see the size. The size is up here. Here's my width, here's my height. Those are millimeters though, and I don't know millimeters. Let's go to inches. Okay, so right now it's huge. I want to have it be 2.25 inches tall. Now notice this is unlocked. I want to keep this shape or these proportions. So I'm going to go ahead and lock that and I'm going to change my height to 2.25. Okay, my recording software stopped. So if my screen looks slightly different, maybe I have a slightly smaller or larger area, that's why. Now I've changed the height to 2.25 and the width, which is at the widest area, is 1.008. So I'm going to resave this. Save as. I'll keep the same name, skewed rectangle, and save. Let's replace it. I'm doing this because I want to show you when you pull this into design space, the size changes. And so I don't get too concerned about the exact size up here. As long as it's the shape and the proportions I want, I'm happy because, again, you pull it into Cricut and for some reason the size changes. Now let me show you what I'm talking about. I'll go ahead and open Cricut Design Space. Click on New Project. Whoops. Let's make this a little bit bigger. And I want to upload. I want to upload skewed rectangle. Okay, so here it is. I'll just keep that name, save it. And then I'll insert that into my project. And notice it's 0.356 wide and 0.794 tall. So I can either stretch it to the right size or just like normal, you can go up here in height and put 2.25 and now you're at the right size. And we're ready to duplicate and then make it. And then the rest you do just like normal. Now, I hope you learned a little bit about Inkscape today. If you just keep watching some tutorials and practice, you will be able to learn some basic functions in Inkscape and maybe even become a pro. Fair warning, the newest version of Inkscape is pretty new, so a lot of the tutorials are in the old version. But again, I just think this new version is so much easier. Thanks so much for joining me. I'm Marilyn. Bye-bye.